Hello, what's going on guys? I'm John Hasselbauer, golf writer for thelines.com. This is From the Tips, Genesis Invitational Edition. Exciting week of golf ahead at the Genesis Invitational with Tiger Woods himself, the usual tournament host, here to uh, actually play for the first time since the Hero World Challenge. Um, his first time playing in a real full, full-ish field uh, competitive event um, since the major season last year. So it's been a while since we've seen Tiger. The glimpses that we've seen of Tiger have been pretty promising, actually. He was top five off the tee at the Hero World Challenge. He put on a lot of upper body strength, which is an interesting new look for Tiger. He's got a new brand uh, on display this week. We'll talk a little bit about how viable of a play Tiger Woods is this week. Um, any matchups that might be interesting to take a look at through the resources at the lines, um, and then go into the board, what it takes to succeed at Genesis Invitational, um, the top players here, their course history, and then we'll go through my model and the best that I place. Before we get any further into that, make sure you are subscribed to the Lions YouTube channel, ring the bell for any new notifications uh, on this channel, and check out the rest of this channel, not just for golf stuff, um, football season has just ended, but we'll be picking up um, the NBA. Um, personally, I think it's full, um, you know, full spotlight on golf for the next couple of weeks. Got a lot of great events coming up. We got the players next month, um, and then you know, we'll, we'll, NFL will come back in the the I don't know the summer. We'll, we'll do some NFL draft content and all that. But um, every sport you can think of is covered at thelines.com by. Um, a lot of uh, writers and content providers, much smarter than myself, much sharper than myself uh, in those sports as well, for sure. So check that out. Onlines.com, join the Discord if you haven't already. Um, the Discord was buzzing on Sunday for Nick Taylor's 175 to 1 outright ticket, our first outright win of the new season in 2024 at the WM Phoenix Open. That was a really fun sweat uh one that i really didn't think nick taylor stood a chance in with scotty scheffler uh charging down the stretch charlie hoffman perfecting the game of golf for long stretches of time um really doing nothing to give up that tournament but nick taylor despite how awful he looked off the tee uh, i mean that guy had the driver yips like I've never seen from a, a tournament winner. Um, every tee shot he took looked like Mito Pereira on 18 at Southern Hills where he was fighting some sort of buzz sawed off uh, slice finish. Uh, he was missing significantly right. He was missing significantly left. He was hitting into natural cacti. He was taking unplayables, um, but he was absolutely nails getting up and down from like 100 yards, uh, 100 to 120. He just kept getting himself back into position and saving par, um, making long birdies where he needed to and birdieing the 18th hole three times in a row. Felt a little bit lucky with with everything that needed to go our way for that one to hit. Um, that's what happens when you're 175 to one to win a golf tournament. And uh, Nick Taylor is somehow um, the first golfer that I have bet and won outright multiple times since I've been uh, documenting my bets uh, in the beginning of 2021. I've hit 22 outrights since the start of 2021. That's you know about 70 a year. I usually shoot for six a year the way I, I structure my cards. It's a lot of golfers and I've never had a repeat uh, golfer, but um, we hit Nick Taylor at the RBC Canadian Open last year and again last week. So I love Nick Taylor. That's my boy. Um, always going to be a big fan of his and, and whenever his number gets past a hundred, um, well, let's say 150 to one, cause I think he's hundred to one this week already. And I'm, and I'm not feeling that. Um, but he'll be a guy that I always root for and a very entertaining closer. We don't see many players like that who, when they're feeling it and they're in a groove and the putter's working, it's just not going to stop. Um, so love you, Nick Taylor. Uh, happy to be on the board with the first outright in a PJ Tour season that has not been kind um, to outright betting. I mean, if you're a long shot better, you've definitely um, felt long shots have been more viable than ever before, but it's a lot of these random guys winning. Um, for me, with Nick Taylor last week, it was at least you have the course history, a guy who went toe-to-toe -to -toe and really passed the eye test at this event against Scotty Scheffler, 
uh, very similar to Charlie, Char- Charlie Hoffman um, this year, just didn't do anything to let up uh, towards the end of the, of the tournament in 2023, Nick Taylor, that is. Um, but the other guy just outplayed him. Um, you know, so I, I watched the 2023 waste management, didn't know much about Nick Taylor at that time. And so this guy is, is going to be, you know, a winner because he, he stood up to a big crowd. Um, so that paid off at the RBC. It paid off again here. I think he should be a shoe in regardless of what he does for the rest of, you know, this season, he should be a shoe in at Montreal for the president's cup. This guy is a a big game or a big atmosphere player and we haven't seen a ton of him in the majors i'm not saying he's going to translate at majors it's definitely a course fit kind of guy where if you're going to give him a bunch of approach shots inside 150 yards and and you know distance isn't isn't absolutely necessary he can catch lightning in a bottle with the putter get hot with approach um and that's enough to win it a lot of courses like tpc scott still so um happy to have some positive momentum going into this week we finally you don't want to go too many weeks in a row to start a new year without hitting an outright. It starts to feel a little tight, Um, but we got one on the board. So we'll try to get two in a row this week with the Genesis Invitational. And I want to talk about what, what makes this field so interesting. It is a signature event. Um, It's a field of 70 players. It is the top 60 finishers from the previous uh, year on the FedEx cup standings. And then uh, a mix of, the best uh, five players from the previous five weeks to play themselves in. So you get the hottest players um, and then five sponsors exemptions, which is uh, part of the reason why Tiger Woods is here. Um, If we look at the board, you can see Scotty Scheffler is your favorite coming off of a near win, a near three-peat at the WM Phoenix Open. I would say no surprise there for him to be a slight favorite over Rory McIlroy. McElroy skipped the Phoenix Open last week. I'm not surprised about that. He kind of begrudgingly played for the first time last year. That does not seem to be his vibe um, and did not seem to be his course fit either. So he comes in a little bit more well-rested, could be a bit of an advantage after a weird uh, start and stop kind of week in bad weather, really two weeks in a row where we've had bad weather and split waves and playing more than 18 holes in a day. So um, guys who played pebble and then waste and then came here, um, maybe getting a little bit tired. I don't know. It's not a ton of travel. It, maybe there's not much in that, but I would say if you haven't played last week or even either of the last two weeks, you're definitely feeling, uh, rejuvenated compared to the rest of the field. So maybe that's an edge for Rory. He's always played well at, um, uh, at, at Riviera and Riviera has great correlation with all the courses that Rory always plays well between, Augusta and and Quill Hollow. Uh, just a lot of repeat winners. Uh, Max Homa, James Hahn come to mind off the top of my head. Um, you know, and, and Rory's always played well here. So a course that will definitely suit his game. Not something I'm going to bet a 10 to 1, but um, obviously a sensible fit. Then you get a real jam of elite players who are playing pretty well right now and have top 10s, multiple of them, at this event. So Victor Hovland, Xander Shoffley, Justin Thomas, Patrick Cantlay, Colin Morikawa, and Max Homa, all of these guys I would put all in the same tier of great form, really good in California. Most of these guys are from California with the exception of Justin Thomas and Victor Hovland. Um, Just putt well on POA consistently, really good in all facets of their game, really good major players guys who can stand up to the test of difficult conditions. So I, when I'm structuring my card, I want exposure to at least two of those guys. And I don't see a ton of separation, really. Um, I understand why Scheffler and McElroy are at the top. I think you could put any of these guys on the list as the third favorite. I don't think Victor Hoblin, with how he looked at Pebble Beach and and not having um, his short game instructor on the bag anymore and not really looking the same since then, trying different techniques. I think he's in a little bit of like an experimental phase still. And I just don't love what we've seen early on out the gates um, uh, out of his ball striking. Obviously, he's he's an elite talent. I don't think this is going to be a, a forever thing, but am I going to pay a shorter price for a guy with question marks here when uh, everybody below him at a longer price does not have those question marks and has just as, as good a reason for him and course history? So 
maybe a, a DFS leverage play. You'll you'll definitely get some value there. A guy's not jumping to play Victor Hovland this week, uh, but for me, I wouldn't have him as the third um, the favorite in this field. Guy I like a lot, and we'll talk a little bit more about is uh, Ludwig Aberg, or I. He just changed the way that he pronounces his name. I think it's Oberg now, uh, but it seems to change every week. Um, this is a guy who will also touch on this when we get to the model, but just electric on the West Coast swing, skipped waste management, seems to just want to stay in California and ride that hot uh, form. Could have very easily won Pebble Beach. That's a course that really didn't play to his strengths. Um, a bomber who just hits it super straight off the tee. Um, and, and you don't need to hit a ton of drivers. So it almost takes that skill out of his hand and still finish, I think, a stroke shy of Wyndham Clark in um, in only three rounds. So definitely had an opportunity to win. Uh, I'm not sure how much shorter his number could have been had he been coming off a win in his latest start and not a runner-up at the point remains. He's finished top 10 in his last two starts in California. Seems to be comfortable on POA, even if he's not a California guy. Uh, and a very talented ball striker. So a force to be reckoned with, um, a snub from Rookie of the Year last year, I believe. Um, to Eric Cole beat him head-to-head at the RSM Classic in the last event of 2023, and big uh, expectations in store for him. Um, before I go into the model, I do actually want to just kind of look around and see the sort of Tiger Woods props you can find this week. Um, and and just kind of talk about his number for a little bit. So I'm actually going to Google where where Tiger is on the board here just so we can see his odds across the board. So 175 is the best number you can get on him. I'm not going to lie. That's a pretty fun bet to place. He's probably not going to win. Um, but as I wrote about in in this article, which again, you can find on the homepage um, at the lines.com. I have, I have a a section here going through the case to be made about um, Tiger Woods. He was top five off the tee at the hero world challenge. He outdrove guys like Sam Burns and Will Zalatoris. Um, And and he's hitting it a mile. Now he's got a ton of upper body strength. Um, So that's a plus. When you look at what he did at Riviera last year, he gained on the field, he was top 25 in terms of strokes gain approach. He was still a very hobbled version of himself and appears to be much more healthy after his latest surgery going into this year than he was um, this time last year. We had absolutely no expectations for Tiger last year. And he still made the cut. Um, this is a limited field where the top 50 or anyone within 10 strokes of the lead um, halfway through are going to proceed through the cut. I do think that Tiger can do that. Um you're not going to get great odds on that because it's such a, a short field. Um, but I do think Tiger can be a top 50 player in this field. I'm not saying he is one of the 50 best players present day in this field, um, but he's somebody who who has the upside. Um, we haven't really seen the putting pan out um, to Tiger levels, but that's something that I think will just come with reps. He's always credited his hands as being the reason for his greatness, and his hands were completely unaffected by, you know, his his latest injury history. So, um, I have a lot of high hopes for Tiger. Um, I do want to look and see down here what you could get a top twenty on Tiger for, it, which is one of the things I love about having this feature inside the article. Um, is you can always go in here and take a look at uh, what the odds are across all the odds um, providers. So they are telling you that Tiger Woods plus 360 to get a top 20. He is just as likely as Matt Kuchar, Ben Griffin, and Kevin Yu. Um, to be honest, that actually that sounds about right. I, I think his odds should be a little bit longer than that. Um, I, I think somebody like a Kevin Yu, who's an elite ball striker, hits it a mile and straight and has shown a little bit more uh, proven ability on difficult courses. It's probably a better bet than Tiger Woods plus 360. So looking at that, I would probably leave it alone. Um, you might find some value in the top 40 market. Let's look at that. 
uh, about even odds for top 40. That's an interesting bet. I'm probably not going to place that one either, but I'm really rooting for that. Um, it's not a bad number. Uh, in a field of 70 for him to be a little bit better than half at a course that he loves, that he finished 45th last year in, in a field that was full and a signature field that was loaded uh, in worse health. I think you could definitely talk yourself into an even money top 40 bet on Tiger Woods. Um, and that's usually a trap bet over the last few years betting on Tiger Woods. But um, it, it, just know going into it, if you are going to bet, it, you're probably not going to get the most fair number. Um, but if you're doing it for entertainment purposes and you just want to root on Tiger, um, I don't think it's a bad week to do that. Um, okay, why don't we move it along into the model, my bets. We're going into bet the number here again, um, as I kind of teed up last week. Um, I do still use Fantasy National for some things, but the basis of my model and everything that I write about, all the, st- all the, the, uh, the stats that I source in the tournament preview article are all coming from this database um, at Bet the Number. So um, be on the lookout for more updates on that from me. Um, but I'm just really excited about this tool and being able to do these videos and show a very clear view in order uh, of the most important uh, stats in my model to the least important, but still featured. Um, you get a nice view in green of all the recent results uh, from, from recent events. Um, and then you can also see how they did at this event over the last five years, which is all very crucial for me when I'm somebody who, you know, every, every time I put a model together, I put a lot of weight on comp course history. I'm curious about course history. I like to know what's going on with recent form, and I really like to know exactly how people finish at that event in the past. Um, what I like about this view too is when we talk about the last two weeks kind of being, um, you know, it, it, let's say you want to fade somebody who uh, played in the in waste management. You want to play a favorite who's got a little bit of, of a fresh um, body coming in. Then you can see guys like Xander, Ludwig, and Victor you know, are a little bit free, uh, uh, a little bit looser, right? So um, you can also see course history. I know this is Ludwig because he hasn't played here before, um, but he's coming in off a of multiple top 10. So I just love having this view when I look through the board. I love that it updates dynamically with uh, DraftKings live odds uh, and top 20s. I believe you can also add in here top 10s if you want to do that. Um, if I want to put all of these up here and look at Tiger Woods and see where the value is, you know, top 20 at 360, that's what we were just talking about, even odds for top 40. So this is all up to date. Um, I like to have all that info in front of me. I'm always looking at this from a betting lens, um, but you also get your DraftKings pricing in here too. So overall, just really excited to have this tool. Um, makes my life a lot easier, makes my life a lot more efficient, um, when I am researching a tournament because it is all in one place and I trust the data very much. Um, I haven't even gone into all the new stats that you can get with this, um, which are included in here, but that will be for another video. Um, when we talk about Genesis, what's important here, uh, it's a tough course. So we need guys who are coming in in good form. Um, I'm putting approach off the tee and stroke skin around the green all in here. I want an element of POA putting. Um, I also think putting from five to 15 feet has been very crucial here. That's something that could be an issue for a guy like Scotty Scheffler, who in a field of 72 people is 66. That's a little alarming, um, for the odds on favorite. So if you're looking for a reason to fade, that key putting range could be a reason to get off of Scotty Scheffler. Um, aside from this just being a difficult course, really does emphasize approach from these two ranges of 150 uh, to 200. So I've got both of those in my model. Uh, bogey avoidance, obviously very important at a difficult course. You don't need to worry so much about birdies are better gained here. Um, you know, just the, this course itself begins with the easiest hole on the PGA Tour, a 500 yard downhill par five. Uh, basically, an automatic birdie. If you're parring that hole, you are almost losing a full stroke to the field. And it's actually a very reasonable uh, eagle opportunity, depending on where they put that pin. So, 
Uh, that's an easy hold. The 10th hole is a very interesting, uh, difficult, drivable par four. It'll be interesting how guys approach that if they just want to drive it into the bunker um, or drive it kind of pin, pin high to the left. It's almost impossible to, to hold that green off the tee. Very few players will do that each day. Um, but you're just trying to get a, a three on that hole if you can. Um, it, bogey can definitely come into play. So a little bit of course experience, what not to do, um, will come in handy, uh, when, when approaching that hole in general, a lot of long par fours, um, and short par threes and par fives. So it, the course yardage is around 7,300 yards, but it's not a bomb. It's, it's not a short course and there's definitely more advantage, um, for length, but, uh, you know, accuracy is still important here. So, um, just a lot of different ways to say it. It's a difficult course. You got to be good at a lot of things. Shouldn't be a surprise winner. If there's, if I put my foot down on one thing this week, uh, and we filter this by, you know, our outright favorites, I think somebody, uh, at this threshold and above 20 to under and shorter, uh, is going to win. That's, that's just what this tournament does. It, it accentuates, um, shot making and scoring in difficult conditions. And it's, it's in Los Angeles. It's a big crowd. It's a really important tournament. There's a lot of start power out here. It's a loaded field. Um, I understand Nick Taylor just won, um, a high octane event with a bunch of pressure around him as 175 long shot. Um, but I don't think that's going to be the case this week. There's just, you, you cannot, um, mask poor ball striking here. You can't really get around if you're not, uh, a great short game player here. Um, or if you're not, you have to have a great week with your short game because you're going to miss a lot of these greens and regulations. So just a lot of, um, a lot of signals that say go top heavy this week. Um, when I filter this by my model, you're not going to see any surprises because it's a limited field with a very concentrated group of players. But just to go through it, it's Scheffler, number one, Shoffley, Homa, Ludwig, Hovland, Thomas, Sahith. I guess that would probably be the only big surprise here is 8,600 on DraftKings. He's 35 to one. Um, so he would be the probably the biggest outlier in my model, just probably carried by the putting on POA. The course history is pretty good. Adam Scott, another guy, great course history. Um, you can see he is number six there. Um, so he's number eight in my model. Number nine is Colin Morikawa. Number 10 is Rory McIlroy, um, who just doesn't have a lot of stats under his belt on the PGA Tour. Otherwise, he probably would be uh, slightly higher, but we know he's he's a deserving uh, top two favorite this week. Um, and then as I go into uh, my bets, uh, I can filter that nice and easy. Um, all guys who modeled out very well um, for me, they're all top 12 in my model, and I was able to bet four of them uh, within the the usual structure um, that I always include in my outright betting. Um, I, my first bet this week was Ludwig. Uh, he is uh, 20 to 1 on DraftKings. I think that's a great number. Anything 20 or longer, I actually got him at 24 to 1 uh, early in the day. If you're in the Lions Discord, uh, you would you would know that. <laughs> that was flagged. Uh, the first thing I woke up, I saw that. I put that in the chat. Uh, we got a lot of people taking advantage of a good number that has since been bet down. Um, so just one of the many benefits of being in the Lions Discord. Uh, Ludwig is somebody who's elite off the tee, number five, starts getting off the tee. He's elite in par four scoring and bogey avoidance. Um, and he's been putting lights out lately. When you look at him on the California swing, we can slide on over here. He's been top 10 at Pebble Beach and the Farmers Insurance Open. So um, yes, he is a debutante here. He was a debutante at each of the last two California events and it didn't seem to matter. So we're getting a discount because everybody else on this board who's elite has course history to kind of factor into their number. I don't really think it's much of a leap of faith to say that the success he's had at Torrey Pines and Pebble Beach will continue to translate here. We obviously know um, Max Homa is somebody who plays well across the, the California swing and that translates to uh, Riviera. So I have high hopes that uh, Aberg will be in contention by the end of the week. Um, Justin Thomas, second guy, but he's at 16 to one here. I actually got him at 27 to one also on bet six, bet three, six, five. Um, just a crazy number. I actually would have expected him to be the third favorite this week. Had he shown a little bit more life at the WM Phoenix open. 
Um, kind of fizzled out a little bit. I believe he was still a top there he is top 12 finisher, uh, 12, six and, and third in three of those last four weeks. He's obviously trending very well. He's a little bit of a mixed bag with a couple missed cuts here, but he finished runner up in 2019 top 20 last year, six before that in lesser form for sure than what he's showing now. So, uh, number one around the green, number one in recent form, very interesting, um, for Justin Thomas, the 16 to one number is what I would have expected. And uh, I got a nice odds discount on him, which I'm very appreciative of because I really just wanted to jam in as many guys at the top of the board as I could afford to. Um, so happy to be on Justin Thomas again. I bet him um, at Pebble. And who knows? He was T6 going into the last round, had a chance to contend if he uh, was still uh, able to play four rounds that week before they cut it off. Uh, next guy I bet was Colin Morikawa. 16 to 1 here. I want to say I got him somewhere at 20 or 22 to 1. Again, these are all uh, DraftKings um, odds. I could probably filter it back here, um, give you a better, more accurate uh, comparison across um, across all of the market. So with Colin, you can still get a 20. Um, that's 20 standard on Bet365. They do have an enhanced non each way market that I like to bet in. Um, where I would imagine he's probably still available at 22 to one. This Justin Thomas number has been bet down a lot since, you know, by the time this video comes out, another reason to get in the lines discourse, so you don't miss out on that CLV. Um, and Aberg, you can still get at 22 to one on Bet rivers, which also offers enhanced dots. So I would definitely recommend hopping on that if you still can, but Morikawa, maybe a little bit of a hedge here. Um, you know, you got a couple longer hitters in Oberg and, and Justin Thomas. Um, Morikawa's going to live in the fairways here on a course where guys are only hitting 50% of those fairways. So um, good reason uh, to pivot if um, you know guys are struggling to hit the fairways and he is able to hit all of them. This is definitely a course that you're going to be at an advantage if you are able to control your ball out of the fairway. The Kikui rough is hard to predict and uh, can lead to flyers or, or fat shots. Um, just really hard to rely on distance control out of that unpredictable rough. So having that accuracy as a skill set is definitely a great thing um, for, uh, for this tournament. Um, and if you look at his recent results, he was 14th at Pebble, which I think is a great suit for his game. He skipped waste management, so coming in a little bit more fresh. Uh, and great course history here. Back to back top six finishes. California guy, um, not terrible on POA. Um, you can even see here, you know, 37th on, on um, putting on POA is not really much to write home about, but compared to his baseline of putting, it's actually um, considerably better. So I think that's encouraging for me um, and well worth um, 22 to 1 on a player who has great. Um, Ability to close out tournaments when he gets in the mix. And my last guy is Wyndham Clark coming off that Pebble Beach win. Um, did kind of fall apart at Waste Management. I actually saw him uh, more in contention uh, for most of the week. So I guess he had a tough Sunday or blew up on a couple holes. But he played well last week, hit a lot of putts, um, was inside the top 10 at one point um, over the weekend. I don't even know what round it was because everything was so scattered. But um, obviously the game is in good form. Uh, has had good results before he had this come up. He's a much better player today than he was when he was finishing top 20 in 2020 and 2021. Um, and I got him at 55 to one again on bet three, six, five. So hopefully you have access to that book because they have been very generous post Super Bowl. They must have had a good cleanup on Super Bowl. That's very generous of them to offer the best odds this week um, in the market. And somebody who is from the Pacific Northwest, I believe he's a Washington guy, um, has been very good on POA. Uh, he's top 10 POA putting here. Um, top five in a par five scoring, which makes sense. He's a bomber uh, and good with his long iron. So um, like Wyndham Clark, I feel like we're getting a, dis a discount for really not much reason. That, that 8300 price I love for DraftKings as well will be popular, but... Um, just playing good golf right now. Good player. US, US Open champion on, on another George Thomas design um, in LA. So that's a nice little connection. Nice little narrative to be chasing this week. 
Um, okay, that is going to do it uh, for this week. Had a lot to cover with um, you know the, coming off the win at the, the waste management. So I want to talk about that and Tiger Woods a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited for Tiger Woods to be back to to be keeping the momentum going into Genesis Invitational. Um, and excited to put out more content for Genesis this week and have golf be kind of center stage with uh, football in the in the rear view. Um, so I think that'll do it for today. Thank you guys so much for listening as always and best of luck with your golf bets.